What up, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And today we're going to be coming at you with another episode of Designated Twitter. Where we dive into all the hottest topics in Dodgerland. And today we're talking about Ryan Pepio's first big league start. Should the Dodgers trade David Price? Is Clayton Kershaw the greatest pitcher in Dodgers history? But first, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And so the first topic we're going to dive into today is about Ryan Pepio. We're going to have ourselves a pep talk here on Designated Twitter. And we asked you guys over on Twitter, how big of an impact will Ryan Pepio have on the Dodgers this season? And 64.9% of you said some, 20.4% of you said none, 148 of you said big, and that's with 515 votes. We just threw that out there just an hour ago. Now, when it comes to Ryan Pepio, he, of course, was the Dodgers' third round pick back in two. 2019. He's currently their number six prospect so far this year in AAA. He has a 2.05 ERA through 26 and a third innings pitch. If you look at his strikeout numbers at 12.3 strikeouts per nine, 4.10 walks per nine. And when it comes to Ryan Pepio, you know he has that filthy changeup. And he has filthy stuff. And because of that, sometimes you'll see him miss the plate at times. If you had the robo umps at AAA, I think those strikeout numbers would be a little higher. And I think when it comes to Ryan Pepio and his impact on the Dodgers this season, he definitely can have some to big of an impact. I think it's going to be somewhere in between. I think he's a guy that can be a multiple inning guy coming out of that pen. He has the talent. He has the, the filthy stuff. And I definitely think Ryan Pepio is a guy that can come up and really make a name for himself right away. But I asked the staff here at Dodgers Nation what their takes were on Ryan Pepio. And here's what they had to say. With our boy Pep, friend of the show, Pepois, if you're nasty, he's going to have a massive impact on this team this year. They're going to need help. He's ready to go. He's locked in for justice. I think Ryan Pepio is going to have some impact for this team. He's still only 24 years old. He hasn't been playing professional baseball that long. He's a college pitcher, so he's probably a little more polished than your uh, average 24-year-old. But, you know, I think the Dodgers are just very, very careful with young arms. I don't see him throwing 150 innings for this team. But uh, I think he will have some impact. I think he's going to help this rotation. He's going to help this pitching staff. And if we learned one thing last year, injuries to the pitching staff do happen, and Pepio should be part of the solution. Uh, I think Ryan Pepio will have some impact this year. I think he's going to be more of a spot starter than anything else. Obviously, they're going to have to make room on the 40-man for him and start his clock. So I think he'll have some impact, but uh, overall, probably not the season for him to be like heavily involved in the starting rotation, barring any major injury, which you obviously hope does not happen. So some impact. And next, what we're going to jump into is, should the Dodgers trade David Price? Well, earlier today, Peter Gammons tweeted out, Tales, some club people say Reds now willing to talk Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley. Dodgers will move David Price to give him starting opportunity. And two GMs today said A's won't trade Frankie Montas for at least two months. The Montas chase will be the running of the Bulls. So we're sure we're going to talk about some of those other names like Castillo, Malley, and Montas. I've talked a lot about those guys in the past, but today we're going to focus on David Price. I asked you guys on Twitter, should they trade David Price? Now, in my opinion, if you look at Price so far this season, he's pitched in just five games, four and two thirds innings pitch, does have a sub two ERA at 193. That FIP is a little high. He is inducing some soft contact. He's missing some barrels, doesn't strike out a ton of guys. And when it comes to David Price, I think it comes down to, does he have a role on this team? We knew that he was able to embrace a role coming out of the the bullpen. He was open to being a long man, give you multiple innings of relief. But if the Dodgers could get some financial relief for David Price, I think that's something they would consider. Now, you're not going to get a lot back from David Price. You might get a bag of chips and a half drink Coke Zero or something like that. You're not going to get a lot back. But if you could get some financial relief, that's something you would consider. But I asked the staff here at Dodgers Nation, should the Dodgers consider trading David Price? Should they trade David Price? And here's what they had to say. I would argue it makes all the sense in the world to trade David Price. They haven't known what his role is on this team since he opted out in the 2020 season. They just piecemealed some sort of campaign together from 2021. And I asked this earlier this week on, on the Blue Heaven podcast. I don't understand why he's in the dugout. He's clearly he's clear of COVID protocols, but he hasn't been active. They don't know what to do with him. And I hope he's secretly behind doors asking for a trade, begging for a trade. Uh, get, let the man go. Let the man go. 
I absolutely think the Dodgers should trade David Price. Not because I think he sucks. Not because I don't like him. I actually really like David Price. But they haven't given him an opportunity. They should do what they did with Ross Stripling. Send him somewhere where he can play consistently. I think they're doing him a disservice. I think it's kind of fishy that he's still on the co- he's still on the COVID injured list, even though he doesn't have COVID, or at least on the injured list. But you got to get Price elsewhere. Let him play out his golden years, this last season of his contract, somewhere where they're actually going to let him play. Uh, it's kind of a surprise to me that David Price is still on this team in the first place. I kind of forgot about him a little bit. He never really made sense for the Dodgers in the first place. He was kind of just thrown in on that deal. I think he's beneficial. He can help out any team. But if he does want to start and he doesn't want to start ball games, like, eh, why not? Send him to another team. You're not going to get anything in return for him, especially if he has $16 million attached to his name. The Dodgers will probably end up paying some of that as well, regardless. So, I don't know. It feels like a respect thing more than anything because I feel like the Dodgers do have a lot of respect for him as a player. Trade him. But now let's get into some of your takes over on Twitter. At Brandon DTAs tweeted, just DFA him or just release him. Hasn't done much for Dodgers anyway. Why aren't they using him COVID IL? So first of all, hasn't done much for the Dodgers anyway. If you look at his numbers in two years with the Dodgers, a 3-9-1 ERA in 78 and thirds innings pitch. Of course, he opted out of the 2020 season. And also, when you look at his role on this team, using him as a reliever last season in 2021. He had a 4-1-8 ERA coming out of the bullpen with a 1-7-6-3 whip. This year, he does have a sub-2 ERA at 1-9-3, but he just doesn't have that role on this team. And if he wants to start, if you look at this team, he's already behind guys like Tony Gonsolin, Andrew Heaney when he's healthy, Tyler Anderson. You got Mitch White, Andre Jackson, maybe now even Ryan Pepio. So if he wants to start, this is not the team for him. Now, just DFA him or just release him. Well, if you just release him and you allow him to become a free agent, you have to eat that $16 million. I think if you DFA him, that's another option. But the Peter Gammons tweet tells me that the Dodgers are kind of working for him and trying to explore a trade and they're doing what's in his best interest. So I think that's also why you see him on the COVID IL. You see him in that Dodgers dugout, but he's not really doing anything because they're trying to preserve him and keep him on ice while they look for a team to trade him to. Then we've got at Rook LB20 and have him take his remaining contract. Yes, please. Without Price, we have no Mookie. So, yeah, I mean, we look at it. If David Price meant Mookie bets in the long term, that was a win. Then at David Wass, six underscore Wass says, trade for what? A bucket of baseballs? So, yeah, like I said earlier, his trade value isn't very high. But if you can find a team that will absorb some of that contract, give the Dodgers some financial relief from that $16 million that that they're paying him this season. I think that it makes sense for a team that needs a back-end starter. He can still be a serviceable number four or five starter for a team out there. Not a World Series contending team, but I still think if David Price is healthy, he makes sense for some teams around the league. Then at Ryan underscore 2.0 tweeted, no one is going to take on any substantial amount of the 16 mil the Dodgers are paying him this year. Besides that, nobody is giving up anything good to get him. Yeah, you're not going to get very much. You're probably going to see some some lower prospects, some cash considerations, things like that. But really what you're doing is is a goodwill trade for David Price, a guy that gave money to the Meyer League system, a guy that's been a very respected clubhouse president. So, yeah, I agree with that. But when you think about it, this is really the Dodgers doing him a solid. Then finally, and then finally, at Adam says, we'll need him eventually due to injuries. Yeah, that is definitely something to consider. Last season, the Dodgers, they used a franchise record 39 pitchers last Last season, And if the injuries start to pile up, David Price is the guy that you can plug in to that bullpen, a guy that could make some starts if you build him up. So that's definitely something to consider. But you also have to realize that this team, during the offseason, they better equip themselves to deal with these injuries. And you do have Duffy and Dustin May coming back at some point this season. So really, I think David Price is going to be the odd man out. And the best thing to do for him is to ship him somewhere where he can have an opportunity to start. And the Dodgers can try to get some financial relief and maybe some lower level prospects. And next, this one's going to cause some debate. We asked you guys over on Twitter, is Clayton Kershaw the greatest Dodgers pitcher of all time? And 72% of you said yes, while 28% of you said no. And that was with 9,019 votes. So I think this one kind of depends on which generation you're from. The old guard Dodger fans, they're going to say Sandy Koufax. The new guard Dodger fans, they're going to say Clayton Kershaw. And of course, Kersh, he 
accomplished a big time milestone last week by becoming the Dodgers all time strikeouts leader after striking out Spencer Torkelson there in the fourth inning for his 2,697th. He now has 2,702 strikeouts, so he's building on that lead. And to me, when it comes down to it, it's the high peak of Koufax versus the longevity of Clayton Kershaw because we know they have a lot of similarities. They're both lefties. Their names both start with a K. Both have three Cy Young Awards. Both have one MVP. Koufax has them on the no-hitters and the perfect games. Of course, four no-hitters for Sandy. One perfect game. And he really had one of the greatest five-year runs that a starting pitcher has ever had. He also has two World Series MVPs. He put the Dodgers on his back in 63 and 65, taking home the World Series MVP in both those years. But to me, when it comes down to it, like I said, it's the peak versus the longevity because Kirsch definitely has him on the longevity and it's almost like 1A++ versus 1A+. To me, Koufax is the Beatles, whereas Kershaw is the who. Kershaw is Snoop Dogg, where Koufax is Tupac. You got the high peak versus the long sustained greatness, but to me, you're really splitting hairs here. Two of the greatest pitchers, not just in Dodgers history, but in baseball history. So it's a real tough one. But let's see what the staff here had to say. Is Clayton Edward Kershaw, the greatest pitcher in Dodgers franchise history. You look at the wins above replacement. You look at the strikeouts. You look at the wins real soon. He's up there. He's the guy. He is the guy. Greatest of all time. He's doing it in a generation where everybody is a massively better talent or arguably better talent than in years past. The guy's a beast. He's a Hall of Famer, and he's the best pitcher of all time. I love Clayton Kershaw, my all-time favorite baseball player. I do not think he is the best Dodgers pitcher of all time. Sandy Koufax is in a class all by himself, four no-hitters in four years, a perfect game, three World Series rings. I mean, there's no one who ever did what Sandy Koufax did in his career. It was a short peak, but it's probably the greatest peak we will ever see in the history of baseball. And although, by the way, just throwing a pitching triple crown in there too. So it's Sandy Koufax, but Kershaw deserves all the pub. He deserves all of the love, and there's absolutely no shame and being second place to Sandy Koufax, a.k.a. the left arm of God. Is Clayton Kershaw the greatest pitcher in Dodgers history? By numbers, Russell Martin is the greatest Dodgers pitcher in history. So, I mean, I don't even know how you can make that argument. But no, I mean, realistically, ah, I'm a Kershaw homer. I, I stand that guy from the day I was born till the day I die. He's not actually that old. But I love that man. I think he can do no wrong. I do think he's the greatest and on his way to a Cy Young Award this season. Let's get into some of your takes over on Twitter. At Ginseng52 tweeted, question to ask is, which Dodger pitcher was ever anticipated to throw a no-hitter before every start? Those who have witnessed Koufax pitch will tell you that they did. Kershaw is a close second best. Koufax was untouchable. Yeah, Willie Stargell once said that hitting Koufax was like drinking coffee with the fork, and you expected great things to happen when he went out there on the mound. Most certain. Then Ryan the designer tweeted, I think it's Kirsch. Sandy had the benefit of the 18-inch mound and the era of the pitcher in the 60s. Kirsch had the end of the steroids era and then juice balls when he was in his prime again. I think it's Kirsch, but both are on MLB pitching Mount Rushmore. Yeah, I think one, it's very tough to compare eras. Yes, you did have that 18-inch mound. And if you really wanted to spot a pimple on a model, you could point out that Koufax had a 137 ERA at Dodger Stadium and it 257 ERA on the road, but still, his peak, that five year stretch was just ridiculous. From 1962 to 1966, Koufax went 111 and 34 with a 195 ERA. He won the NL ERA crown all five years, and he also won the Cy Young three times. And back then, there was only one Cy Young in Major League Baseball. You didn't have two, one for the National League and one for the American League. So his peak was ridiculous. And look, Clayton Kershaw, he had a hell of a peak himself, but what Koufax was able to do in that dominant stretch, I don't think will ever be done again. And then at Afro Jew 84 tweeted, Koufax until Kershaw pitches the Dodgers to more World Series victories. Yeah, to me, that's what really separates Koufax from Kershaw, is what he was able to do on the game's biggest stage. You saw in the 1959 World Series, appeared in two games, made one start, allowed one run, and nine innings pitched. In the 1963 World Series, he allowed three runs in 18 innings 
innings pitch. Went 2-0, took home the World Series MVP. And then in 1965, one of the most dominating performances in the history of the World Series. One run in 24 innings pitched. And you're talking about short rest, complete game shutouts. I mean, the man was an absolute beast. And then also back in, like I said, 1963, 15 punch outs in game one of the 1963 World Series was a new record at that time. But I will say that Clayton Kershaw was robbed of the 2017 World Series title. So I think Kershaw should have at least two World Series. Then 2018, the Red Sox also cheated in the regular season. So Kershaw was robbed a little bit. And then finally, at Team Euro, Disney tweeted, for longevity of his career, yes, but in his prime, got to go Koufax. Yeah, I think if you want to make the case for Kershaw, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, he is definitely a lead. He's a legend. But I think longevity go with Kersh. You look at the peak, the prime, you go with Koufax. So those are their takes on Kershaw versus Koufax. Like I said, it's like picking between a Rolls Royce and a Bentley. But Koufax, this is postseason numbers don't lie. A .95 postseason ERA. But if you look at the body of work from Clayton Kershaw, it's very impressive. Like I said, 1A++ versus 1A+. But let me know down below in the comment section. Do you think the Dodgers should trade David Price? What are your expectations for Ryan Pepio? Do you think he'll have none, some, or a big impact for the Dodgers this season? season and also who is the greatest pitcher of all time is it Clayton Kershaw or Sandy Koufax let me know down below in the comment section my name is Doug McCain you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at dmac underscore LA for our latest Dodgers news rumors hype videos interviews breakdowns and more be sure to hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content smash that like button really helps out the channel and as always think blue bleed blue and I'm out